Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we are going to be going over my final 2022 seven round mock draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We got four in this year, didn't get to six like I wanted, but obviously I was doing some other projects on the side. If you guys haven't seen my interview that I did with former Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians, go check that out. That was done just a couple of days ago. Also, for those of you who have not seen yet, I will also be doing reaction live streams to the day one and day two and possibly day three as well of the NFL draft. The entirety of the first round, the entirety of rounds two and three, and possibly the remainder of the draft as well. I'm thinking I'm going to get those parties started an hour before the time that they start. So in the case of Thursday, for example, the draft starts at 8 p.m. I believe I'm going to fire up my live stream at around 7 p.m. So stay tuned for that. I will have that scheduled up on the channel soon. But Diving back down into this mock draft, this is the mock draft where I compile everything together, right? I take all of my previous mock drafts, I take the current team needs that the Buccaneers have and what everybody else has been saying, be it experts or fans, everything in between, and I compile it all together for a mock draft that I think is arguably the most realistic path that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could take in this upcoming draft. I'm not going to say that all players in this mock draft are going to be every single player that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to draft, but I feel very good about this path that I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers making in this final mock draft. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and dive right in with the 27th overall pick in round number one. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Perion Winfrey, interior defensive lineman out of Oklahoma, six foot four, 303 pounds. At the end of the day, I did decide for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to get an interior defensive lineman versus an interior offensive lineman, and you could go either way with this, folks, and it would make sense for me. I have interior defensive linemen right now because of really just the bigger need at that position. You could argue that left guard is a huge, huge need, and trust me, it is. We'll get to that in a minute, but they have guys like Aaron Stinney, Robert Haynes, and some other pieces there who could compete for that starting job. On the defensive side of the football, a defensive end, you don't have as many guys who are going to be able to compete. Yes, you have Rakeem Nunez Rochez. Yes, you bought, brought in a couple of guys like uh, Deidrin Sennett and Pat O'Connor they brought back, but there isn't anybody there who you think has a, a very, very strong chance to be a full season starter at that defensive end position until Ndamukong Sue possibly comes back. And even right now, that's still a little bit up in the air. Nobody really knows as to what the heck's going on with him coming back to the team. It still seems likely, but there is still, you know, some questions there. So I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going ahead and having an insurance policy in place if they are not able to bring back Indomitian Sue in Perion Winfrey here. He would be able to start right away for the Bucks at the defensive end position next to Vita Vea and Will Golston, and I think he would do a very, very solid job. He's a great run defender. He's got ability as a pass rusher as well. If the Buccaneers were to bring back Indomitian Sue, he could still be a rotational starting caliber type of player, much like what Joe Tryon was for the team last year, and I think that he would slot into that interior defensive line into this Buccaneers front seven with very much ease and give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense a lot of oomph along that defensive line. So Perion Winfrey, interior defensive lineman out of Oklahoma is who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking with the 27th overall pick. In round number two, Pick number 60, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going with an interior offensive lineman now, and this may surprise some people, but I'm going to go with Cole Strange, interior offensive lineman out of Chattanooga. Six foot six, 307 pounds. This man is deceptively large, by the way. I knew he was tall, but in terms of the overall weight, from looking at the guy, you wouldn't be able to tell he's 307 pounds, but that is 
his official weight going into the upcoming NFL draft, and he is projected around the lower 70s in terms, or high 70s, I guess I should say, uh, low 60s in terms of overall draft ranking for prospects, and I think that he would slot in very well for the Bucks. We did just get an interior defensive lineman in round number one. Go ahead and do the opposite and get an interior offensive lineman in round number two. Cole Strange, I think, would compete right away for starting snaps with Aaron Stinney and Robert Hainsley at that left guard position, and I think Strange has fantastic ability. He played pretty much his entire college career at left guard, and he fits the mold of what Jason Light likes to do with interior offensive linemen, or really just offensive linemen in general, but especially at the interior, right? Uh, Cole Strange is a small, small college guy coming from Chattanooga, big Kind of low-key, but has tons of potential and tons of ability. I've even seen some people compare him to guys like Ali Marpet. Shout out to my guy, Cody Haynes, on Twitter, as well as some of the other draft experts on Twitter as well. But yeah, Cole Strange is a very, very impressive guy. In terms of personality, when I talked to him at the NFL Combine, I thought he was great, very kind, very down-to-earth, and very focused on what he needed to do while at the Combine. So when you take all of this and you combine all of it together, I think Cole Strange is a guy that could come in right away, fit the mold of what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers like to do, and possibly push a guy like Aaron Stinney or Robert Hainsey for starting left guard snaps because Strange played pretty much his entire college career at left guard, so he would figure to slot right in. So Cole Strange out of Chattanooga is who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting in round number two. In round number three, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting with the 91st overall pick, a tight end, specifically Jelani Woods' tight end out of Virginia, six foot. 7, 259 pounds. I've talked about a lot of tight ends in this draft class. Four guys who are big guys in my mind are uh, Jeremy Rucker, Greg Dulcich, Trey McBride, and Jelani Woods, who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting here. Jelani Woods has mainly been the fourth guy out of those four tight ends that I've mentioned, with Trey McBride usually being at the top, Jeremy Rucker usually being at number two, Greg Dulcich number three, and then Jelani Woods at number four. But... At the NFL Combine, I saw this dude, Jelani Woods. Freak of an athlete. He had the most bench reps on the bench press, and there was a lot of heavy hitters out there, and the dude has just got speed. He's got length. He's got ability to do everything that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would need for an at least number two tight end with potential to be a number one tight end as well. Granted, if, let's say, Rob Gronkowski does not come back to the team, I think the Buccaneers would go out, sign a different veteran tight end to be their number one, and then Jelani Woods would probably still end up being that number two. But that's a great way to ease him into it because he is a sure blocker. He's a very enthusiastic blocker. He really goes after it in terms of his blocking, and he's got the size, the frame, the athleticism to be a good receiving tight end as well. He just needs a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more coaching to bring it all together and develop into a starting caliber tight end. I think he would find that growth and development in Tampa Bay with Byron Leftwich. Bruce Arians is still a part of the mix. You have Tom Brady who'd be throwing you some passes here or there, and I think it would just be a great place for a guy like Jelani Woods, who has got loads of potential and loads of size and ability to grow and develop into a solid, capable NFL caliber tight end, which is why I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting him with the 91st overall pick in round number three, Jelani Woods, tight end out of Virginia. In round number four, with pick number 133, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting a cornerback, Martin Emerson, cornerback out of Mississippi State, six foot two, 200 pounds. Martin Emerson is a guy who thrives in zone coverage type schemes. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers run a lot of zone coverage with a lot of different types of blitzing and needing secondary members to help out and run defense. Martin Emerson checks all of those boxes, and I think he would come into a situation where he is able to grow and develop behind guys like Jamel Dean, like Sean Murphy Bunting, who both have expiring contracts after this year, and Emerson has the size, the weight, and I think the scheme fit and ability to slot into a potential starting role in a Todd Bowles defense in the future. Maybe as soon as next season, maybe two years down the line, we don't know, but I think that Martin Emerson 
could be a piece for the future and at the very least provide Tampa Bay provide the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with some cornerback depth that is de desperately desperately needed given all the injuries that the team suffered last season. I think that Emerson would at the very least be the number four cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and give them a perimeter outside corner big bulky guy in case Jamel Dean goes down with injury or Carlton Davis goes down with injury. You have Martin Emerson, big guy who fits that mold of what the Bucs look for in a perimeter outside corner who could slot right into one of those starting cornerback positions if you needed him to. So Martin Emerson, cornerback out of Mississippi State is who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting in round number four. Finally, guys, with the final two seventh round draft picks, coming up first, pick number 248 in round number seven. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Bubba Bolden, safety out of Miami, six foot three, 200 pounds. I pick up another big bodied member of the secondary here who, at the very least, would contribute on special teams right away, which I think would be a very solid role for Bubba Bolden. He's got the size. The dude's almost built like a linebacker, basically, and the dude can hit. He's a sure tackler. He is a very smart type of player as well. Fits the mold of what the Bucks are looking for in special teams type players. Look at Grant Stewart last season as a prime example of the type of guy you want to bring in. Just a high motor, really enthusiastic type of guy who's going to get after it every single play, regardless of what he's playing on the field, be it defense, special teams, whatever. I think Bubba Bolden fits into that mix and I think he would initially contribute on special teams with growth for more down the line because he's got the size for it and Keanu Neal, Logan Ryan, these guys are on one year deals right now. They are probably going to have a lot more versatility to what they are going to do. Keanu Neal could play some safety. He will probably be playing like 95% safety, probably even 98% safety, but you could move him around if you needed to to say play linebacker. In the case of Logan Ryan, he's probably going to be playing safety and nickel corners. So Bubba Bolden might also figure into the rotation at some point in the safety group as well. We'd have to wait and see with that. I know it seems like the Buccaneers are investing a lot in the secondary here, even though they already have four very, very solid safeties on the roster. But again, injuries are always a thing you at least have to consider. I would say at the very least, if Bubba Bolden didn't make the roster, he'd be a prime, prime top guy for the Buccaneers practice squad unit and would be able to, again, continue to grow and develop in the NFL system. Bubba Bolden is the first seventh round draft pick I have, safety out of Miami. And then the last pick that I have, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers making in my final mock draft for this offseason, pick number 261 is Noah Burks, edge defender out of Wisconsin. Six foot two, 245 pounds. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers get a developmental edge rusher here. As of the recording of this video, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have Joe Tryon, they have Shaq Barrett, they have Anthony Nelson, but they could figure to use maybe one more young developmental pass rusher. Jason Pierre-Paul is still out there in free agency. He has not been brought back to the team yet. He might not be brought back to the team at all. And this is where I think you get a young guy like Noah Burks to figure into the equation here and somehow, you know, develop as a developmental edge rusher for this team. He's got good size, 6'2", 245 pounds. I think he could be a solid guy in training camp and preseason. Maybe you put him on the practice squad for a year or two, and then maybe he's a backup somewhere down the line. But I like Noah Burke's athleticism. I like his size and overall ability, and I like the fit with the Bucks in terms of not just team needs, but also scheme fitting as well with what Todd Bowles likes to do with edge defenders. So folks, that's it. That is my final mock draft. I am very, very proud of this one. Like I said, this is the closest thing to what I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers path is going to be in this upcoming draft. I think they're going to invest round one and round two in an interior defensive lineman and an interior offensive lineman. I think either round three or round four, they go the tight end route and then whichever one they decide to go, it, let's say they go tight end round three, well then they'll probably go cornerback round four. If they go cornerback round three, then they'll probably go tight end round four. That's how I see the first four rounds working in terms of position needs and whatnot. And then in the seventh round, hey, you get special teams guys, you get guys who can possibly be something somewhere down the line who have got good size, who have got good athleticism and can give you something right off the bat, hopefully. So 
yeah, that is my final mock draft, guys. What do you think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. Do not forget to go check out my Bruce Arians interview. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And also, I will be having my draft reactions live streams coming up on Thursday and on Friday and possibly Saturday as well. Well, I'm going to be having plenty of guests, folks. I'm going to be having people live here in person with me. I'm going to be having people over Zoom. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful time. You don't want to miss it. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.